CataractCoach.com. Why you must know both MSICS and FACO. Similar appearing cataracts, but different surgical approaches by the same surgeon here. So here's the MSICS. Look at the great exposure with the speculum in. So much great exposure. Beautifully done here. There's the incision. Now, MSICS for my American colleagues is manual small incision cataract surgery. But I know what you're saying. It's not a small incision. So think of it the way I do. Manual shelved incision cataract surgery. Look at that incision. It's very shelved. That's a nice long tunnel length of that incision, and it's also trapezoidal. It's an incision that's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. And that's going to allow us to extract this nucleus. This long shelf incision, that allows the incision to seal really well with very few sutures or sometimes even no sutures. So you can see getting the rexus done, important to get a good size rexus here. Well, why? Because you're getting the whole nucleus up out of the caps or bag here. Of course, we've sped up the video. I know what you're saying. So, here we go. Even in our Beverly Hills Surgery Center, I end up using MSICS at least a couple times a year. I use it for these absolutely brunescent Coca-Cola cataracts. Now here, this lens is reasonably dense, but it's mostly opaque. And you can see it's easily extracted. Now a Simcoe cannula being used to just flush out that epinuclear shell here. So once that epinuclear shell is flushed out of the incision, you can use the side port here and use that Simcoe to do cortex removal. So now here's some more viscoelastic filling up the eye and the caps are back. Here's the lens. No need for a foldable lens because you have a big incision. And that lens can be placed in the caps or bag. And you can see what an efficient surgery this is. Now obviously there's going to have there's going to be some astigmatic effect from this incision, especially if you don't suture it. But you can take that into account for your patient. And again, you can make your incision on the steep axis if they already have, let's say, a diopter or more of astigmatism in the cornea, and that can help it. Now, let's look at this one. This patient, look at the exposure. Very narrow palpebral fissure. Also a very highly myopic patient. And sometimes these myopic patients, as you know, have a thinner sclera. So in this case, our guest surgeon is going to do FACO. And again, getting a good rex is done is important here. Now, look at all the milk that comes out, expressing that so you don't get an Argentinian flag sign. Very nicely done. Now, this nucleus is probably not going to be absolutely uh, super dense, but it's going to have reasonable density. It's mostly opaque because, as you saw, the liquefied lens cortex, very typical of an intumescent white cataract. Nicely done, getting this rexus done. Take your time on the rexus here. Here, it doesn't have to be as big of a rexus because, as you know, you can use the phaco probe and you can chop it in the capsule bag. So here's the probe going inside the eye, buzzing with the, the phaco tip. Okay, maybe a groove down the middle. Let's see the groove. I'm watching the video for the first time with you. And there we go, almost. Are we going to chop? Yeah, there we go. There's a little chop, uh, kind of. And you get that nucleus split up. But yeah, in a case like this with a highly myopic patient, you don't want to have that big incision. You don't want to have the eye hypotenuse for any period of time. You don't want to put traction on the vitreous base. You know, again, the scleral could be thinner. You have to worry about that. And with a narrow palpebral fissure here, you're not going to have as much exposure. Now, you can do a temporal MSICS incision, and I've showed those videos before on Cataract Coach. You know, do take my advice here. If you're an American surgeon and you weren't ever taught how to do MSIC MSICS, I promise you can learn it. It's not that hard. And I've got a great video on Cataract Coach. You can look it up. Yeah, you got to leave YouTube for a second. But when you look it up, you'll see that MSICS video um, is just four simple pearls to getting it done. And if you're an experienced FACO surgeon, it really is no issue. So nicely done. So yeah, it was tough to chop this one. A little bit of fibrous posterior plate. So maybe a little denser than we thought. And again, using the FACO probe, you can aspirate that pretty easily. I like the recoding with viscoelastic, smart move there. And now these pieces come down in the FACO tip pretty easily. So I think it's really important for us to have more tools in our toolbox, more surgical options. If you only know one technique and you have to use that for everyone, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, think back, you know, maybe you know some surgeon in your community who only does extra cap surgery, doesn't do FACO, never learned it. And you think, gosh, you should have learned that. Well, believe it or not, that's the same way that you as a FACO surgeon should learn how to do MSICS. It really is that important. And it's a technique that will, on many occasions, be beneficial in your practice. Even if you practice in Beverly Hills, trust me, I know. So now take it out the rest of that nucleus and the rest of the case is going to go beautifully. It's a beautiful case here. And I agree, you got to know both techniques. Hey, let me tell you about our website, cataractcoach.com. Do you know I have a free PDF book about learning cataract surgery, including MSICS? There's a free 25-part curriculum series. you got to check out our free podcast. And of course, follow me on social media so we can all learn together. So beautiful case here, just finishing up at the very end. 
Very nicely done. And please make sure you learn both MSICS and FACO. Thanks for watching.